Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to our Real Talk panel on luck versus strategy in reality television. Today, we're very lucky to have our biggest lineup yet with panelists from Survivor, The Amazing Race, and Squid Game. Now, please join me in giving a warm welcome to our esteemed moderators, the morning show associate producer and former host of Reality Obsessed, Mertz Jaffer, and adjunct professor of game design at NYU, Jeff Engelstein. Thank you for your patience. We are back at the Bag Apple <laughs> once again. Uh, so I'm very excited. We were here last year. We're going to be doing another panel today. It's a question that I have been personally trying to answer for the better part of two decades. Namely, when a player wins a reality show, how much of that win is based on skill and how much of that win is based on luck? Uh, as you just heard from Alex, uh, I'm Merch Jaffer, the former host of Reality Obsessed and currently an associate producer at The Morning Show on Global. And I'm Jeff Engelstein, a professor of game design at NYU and a published game designer, also written a series of books analyzing the strategy, tactics, and psychology of games. Um, who's ready to meet some panelists? <laughs> First up is Caleb from Survivor 4T5. <laughs> also joining us. <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to bring more noise than that. Also from Survivor 45, Kelly. <laughs> Now, it's a good thing he was on uh, Squid Game the Challenge and not The Amazing Race. Uh, Dash Katz. <laughs> hey, and everyone, let's put our hands together from The Amazing Race, Jelani Roy. <laughs> from Australian Survivor, King George. <laughs> Also from Australian Survivor's most recent season, Titans vs. Rebels, Eileen Chong. Now we have to give the loudest cheer, just like we did last year, to the two that brought us all here. First up, Survivor, Kai Guyans, Bryce. Survivor Goes Silent winner, Wendell Holland. Today we will be discussing a topic that every reality contestant and every reality TV fan has debated since the inception of the genre. Is strategy or luck more important in the determination of a reality show winner? At its core, reality TV was built upon the idea that a group of contestants from varied lifestyles, ages, and backgrounds would compete in an equitable televised competition. Today, we will determine if that very premise was flawed from the beginning. Um, Kelly, is the price of keeping fans on their toes worth the risk of alienating the same fans because of the show's sudden randomness? <laughs> oh my god. These questions. That's a doozy. Academic panel, academic panel. <laughs> oh, sorry. You hate production. I don't know if I'm the right person to ask because I'm not a producer and I'm not the game designer. As a player, I don't love all the extreme randomness, but I mean, I think, you know, Aileen was talking about this before, like there's 46 seasons of Survivor. If you do the same thing every season, ultimately it could get a little bit stale. So I think I've touched on this, but it's, it's basically weighing that decision for the producers, like how much do they trust the cast to mm -hmm. deliver interesting gameplay in the confines of their basic game, or do they really need to introduce several new, several new elements of, <laughs> <laughs> shout out Jelinski, um, of randomness that doesn't move the game forward or not, you know, 
I don't know. It's like, it, how much do you need for TV? Like, and we had like the 90 minute episodes on my season. I think the producers knew that going in and that influenced the amount of twists. And so, you know, we're, we're coming into the game as players trying to play the game and to win, but they're trying to make a TV show. And so I think the different perspectives, you know, I think fans can also come from different perspectives too. Some people watch Survivor for the strategy and some people are watching it for the chaos. Some people like 45, some people like 46, you know? <laughs> okay. Was, uh, that, was, that, was that bad? Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, it's good. I love 46. Did, did, you're not being graded on, on your answers, so that's fine. Speak for There's yourself. Speak for yourself. Here, so. Uh, Ash, um, so Squid Game... Uh, had perhaps the most uh, overt luck element, like we talked about, of any of the shows or seasons that are represented up here tonight. Uh, even the finale was just a rock, paper, scissors game to draw a random key that opened a lock. Um, so the, the presence of that luck, so did that, how, did that change your strategy that you approach as you realized the kind of the luck elements, or did luck interfere with the strategy that you were trying to, uh, to play during the game? Hmm. Well, I think a lot of it was, I feel like there's some of it that was skill, some of it that was luck, and some of it was a combination. But there's certain games like Warship, for example, that robbed my bestie Figgy. That's disgusting. Um, <laughs> Like, that was so random. And, like, I won that game technically, even though my team lost, because my boat didn't sink. Like, I got so lucky in that game. Um, and I got lucky that I had bad bitches at the front of my line uh, for the cookie, because, oh, me and Vicky were going up the front of the line. We're like, you cannot pick the umbrella. <laughs> That is a death sentence. And, and my people, they, they listened to us, and they stood strong. And thank God, because I don't know if y'all saw me do the cookie, but it was traumatic. And <laughs> <laughs> I literally was having a panic attack to the whole world. So yeah, I feel like if I had like weaker-minded people at the beginning that were like more pushovers who were willing to take the umbrella, I would have been screwed. But I. At the end of the day, I was just going to play hard and play to win. And, you know, if I get lucky, I get lucky. But I didn't because the way I was eliminated was terrible luck. And maybe we'll get into that a little more later. <laughs> uh, as far as luck, going into Survivor, I, I knew that luck was a, a huge part, right? Um, I figured, you know, if you're, if you're talented, if you study the game enough, you can get butt so far, and then luck hopefully will carry you a little farther. And in my case, episode, I think it was three, um, one of my, my allies were blindsided, and um, Morgan went home instead of Dom or myself. And that was an extreme case of luck, because they could have picked any of us off, and very fortunately, Dom and I made it to the end. So um, going into the game, yes, I knew that there was a, a degree of luck. In the game, clearly, I, was, I benefited from a lot of luck. Um, but to your point, there's a Jay-Z quote that says, when you play with skills, good luck can happen. So you want to go into the game with you know, what you have naturally and all the things that you've studied and your preparation. And then you know, hopefully luck will be on your side also. Maybe something will fall the right, you know, the right way for you at that right moment, and it'll propel your game. So Kelly, you, also, you asked a question at, about luck at the final tribal council. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What It, it was cut from the final Yeah, show. I was like, I wonder why that got cut. Um, <laughs> they, they were really into the question when I proposed it. But basically, you know, how I came up with the question was I was looking at our final three, and I feel like we had two very different paths, where you have like a dominant alliance of Rebo with D and Austin, and then you had Jake, who was like scraping his way from the bottom like the entire game. So I was like, how can I ask a question that allows people to sort of speak on both of their experiences? And so I was, basically the question was, we kind of organized Final Tribal like mental strategy in like social game, physical game. And I was like, but the fourth element is luck. And so I was like, I just want to give you guys an opportunity to talk about how luck impacted your game. Did you have, like, did you capitalize on good luck or did you, you know, how did you overcome bad luck? And for me, I thought Dee gave a very excellent answer to this question where she was able to sort of, um, you know, rightfully acknowledge like the first thing I think she said, she was like, I was lucky to be on Reba, like day one. And then, but she had bad luck. She wasn't on the right side of the mergatory. So she was able to explain 
where she capitalized on good luck and how she overcame bad luck. And so I think that's just a good example of somebody who had some good luck, but ultimately played an extremely skillful game and deserved the win. Um, Caleb, what do you think about luck in the game? There are many things that I can point to. The fact that Canadians were even allowed to apply for U.S. Survivor. <laughs> That could, that could technically be considered good luck as you wouldn't have been able to play at all if that decision was not made. You will also go down in history for successfully playing your shot in the dark. Uh, and yet, uh, let's get a hand for that. <laughs> what a twist. Uh, and yet, you were on one of the worst performing tribes in history. <laughs> um, at, least, at, least, at least until this season. Um, where do you stand on the luck versus strategy debate? Are you uh, a strategic player or just really lucky? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> everybody's here. So I think everybody here believes that there is such thing as luck and luck is a component in the game, right? And I do believe in that some people tend to be luckier than others. But can you bank on luck in Survivor? Kind of hard, right? <laughs> Like some people have to believe in karma, some people believe in like the law of attraction. Like there's different things for different people that they try and lean into, especially if they consider themselves lucky. Um, you know, I always say I'd rather be lucky than good. Uh, final word on this topic goes to Bryson Wen. Uh, what do you guys think? Is Australian Survivor better? Well, <laughs> let me just say this. I love uh, American Survivor. I will have to say over the last maybe like three years, I've been getting into uh, uh, Australian Survivor. My only issue with uh, Australian Survivor is I just get tired of trying to find the links and figure out which episode is which episode of which episode. <laughs> but after watching this episode or this season with Kirby and Ferris, baby, I'm going down under. Because <laughs> I, I think it's like... It's great, like, you know, it's longer. Um, the zaddies are, are, you know, zaddying down there. But no, I really like the gameplay. Again, I, I love American Survivor, but actually getting into uh, Survivor Australia, it's great. Um, I don't think, I feel like it's apple and oranges, right? Like, I feel like it's like Wendell and Bryce. You can't really compare us, although I'm the more attractive, more funny. <laughs> Only thing Wendell has is a, a win that I don't have, but we're both great, and that's how I feel about these two franchises, uh, but last season of Australian Survivor, woo, shout out to Kirby. <laughs> I don't know how this turned into a Bash Wen session, but that's how things are. Um, I don't watch as much Australian Survivor. I, w I watched a few seasons ago, and I think it was the link problem that I was just like, you know what, I'm not watching. But I know that it's a tremendous show. I know that you guys have great players. Um, I watched a lot of George's game. I'm a big fan of King George. Um, and which one's better? I mean, I don't think I have the proper sample size to know which one's better. So I'll defer to my, my good, handsome friend Bryce on that one. <laughs> but in turn, I guess my question is mainly like the timing of it. You know, like, oh, they're in trouble now. Oh, let's just do this sandbag challenge. You know, we can't have our star go home. Was there any sense of that when you were there? I don't think so, not for me. I was trying to save my own ass, okay? <laughs> Can I just say on that, so when I was doing the commentary for 10 on that episode, there was a one in 12 chance of that exact sequence of events happening. One in 12. I said that to the executive producer because I don't know if they thought about the likelihood of X, Y, Z happening. Mm -hmm. So for Eileen and Ferris to both win, um, taking like human factor out of the equation, whether you expected Eileen to do it or not, or Ferris to do it or not, um, and then Kirby, um, was, it was very unlikely. So the probability of that happening was low. But in saying that, um, it, I, I, I don't have a problem with a twist like that because it gives the opportunity for a minority block to do something. And in that particular circumstance, if you didn't have a player, and I'm like a, a very conservative, like I'm not gonna do anything player like Charles there. If you had say Charles and Valeria win that challenge, if that's me, I'm like, right, here's my chance to really take the bulls by the horn on this tribe. I'm not gonna do the easy Ferris or Eileen vote off. I'm gonna, you know, vote off Kirby. 
And you know, just she's not immune. Like it's just it, that kind of twist actually re rewards offensive gameplay. But you need the player to take control of the situation and think on their feet. And just to or add to that, like I leaned in. Yeah, just to add to that, like at that point in time, myself, Ferris, and Raymond, like we hadn't really demonstrated that we were challenge beasts or anything. To, so to say that that twist was put in there for us to win mm -hmm. is extremely unfair. Um, Ferris was pretty decent at challenges. I was all right. Raymond, probably not. <laughs> but I think it was just sheer willpower and then supporting each other. You know, once I was able to smash it out, I was right next to Ferris. Okay, Dash. Um, earlier, you said that uh, you know you wanted to talk a little bit about you know how you got eliminated and that way, and, and you can tell that story. But I'm curious about your perception of that as a player versus you know maybe if you watched it or heard from other people watching the show later about their perception of whether it was how it went down from a viewer perspective. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like low-key getting dragged by my friends because they're like, why'd you open up your mouth? But there was just <laughs> so much more to the story and that we would be here a very long time. <laughs> um, but I told the full story on my YouTube. It's called Spilling the Ink, okay? A little plug. Um, <laughs> But the Spark Notes, Spark Notes version would basically be, no, like it's not, I get it. There's so many players and there's only so much time. They gotta cut it down, right? But I definitely got fucked in that situation. <laughs> uh, because, because basically like, I was honestly in a really vulnerable place going into that game. If I was, ugh. You know what? What could have been? <laughs> okay, <laughs> anyway. Um, I was too trusting of people. I was, there were some people in there that were honestly triggering based on some of the things that I was being told that were being said. As I was fighting for like trans and queer people, like uh, trans and queer homeless youth is something that really hits home for me. I had a very traumatic coming out. Um, so I trusted in my people because they were my safe space there. And then when I was betrayed, kicked off my worship team, none of this aired, mind you. Um, and then I pulled a big brother and I was pretending to sleep um, and I could hear them laughing about what they had done. Um, it got really personal. And so when it came time to vote, Baby, I'm, I'm from Jersey. Like, <laughs> if you come for me, I'm going to come for you. And that's what happened. Let's be very clear. Um, yeah, but it was, it was a total betrayal. And I felt like I had to stand up for myself at that point. So when it comes to the person that eliminated me, I'm proud of myself. Good job, Dash. Um, I didn't call him an asshole. Um, but... <laughs> He honestly was obsessed with me, and like, I don't blame him, but <laughs> it was like weird. It was like hater. It was so hater. The moment he heard my voice, he was seething. <laughs> but I was like, some of his allies were my allies, so I was like, okay, like, he's obsessed with me, but maybe we can turn this into a, like a fan instead of a hater because we have mutual friends. But then the mutual friends totally backstabbed me. So yeah, it was just like your number one hater literally hopping out of the bushes, getting opening up a jack in the box and not getting the sole power to eliminate out of 70 people. Like that's actually fucking insane. I'm sorry, when does that happen in reality TV? I was playing such a good game. I was good with okay. so many people. And yes, I did open up my mouth because I know people are gonna clock me for that. But that was two people that I also didn't like those people and and they were my allies, okay? And I'm, I'm a Taurus, I'm a loyal bitch. Like, I don't come for people unless you come for me. Why would I be randomly coming for people in a 70 person game? That makes no sense. <laughs> I'm a super fan of these shows. Like, I, yeah, I'm not a dumbass, I promise. I'm just, you know, a chaotic bitch. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. Did I answer it? Hopefully. Yes. <laughs> I gotta check out that uh, 
Got to check out the YouTube podcast. That'd be good. Um, so Caleb, um, perhaps the purest expression of output randomness that there's ever been on a reality TV show was the shot in the dark, where players have a one in six chance. Let's go, right? Um, so players who fear they may be voted out, for those who are not familiar, can use this ability to basically they roll a die for one in six chance of the votes against them being negated. And you used it successfully. Still the only person who used it successfully? Yeah. There you go. Um, well played. <laughs> How do you think this changed the game for you? And, or do you think it was a positive addition uh, to give players that option, or do you think it ultimately just muddies the waters? Okay, so I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> but I do think this is the best twist of the new era. <laughs> I mean, uh, first of all, not a lot of competition. Mergatory, losing votes, you know, all these et cetera, et cetera kind of uh, advantages in here. Um, but uh, I think it's good because uh, to start off with, when you think about, uh, you know, like the, the privileged scumbag majority alliance that's always in every season, <laughs> you know who you are. Okay. <laughs> so uh, these guys coming in, trying to run the game. It's very easy for them to pick off the people in the bottom. You know, one, two, three. They can even tell them before there's nothing they can do. So the shot in the dark is that element of it keeps everyone, even in the majority, always playing the game, always trying to have to, you know, shroud the bottom in mystery. Um, so I think it's better in terms of a game mechanic, um, and I think it's also better for a TV mechanic as well because when there's so many plans and counter plans, and that's the problem, not even the problem, but this is what's stressful about survival nowadays, is how many plans are going on because of the shot in the dark, um, it leaves more opportunity for people at the bottom to rally. So is it muddier? More than ever. But I think the price is worth the reward, right? Okay. I think, like, like we've heard here, things evolve. And uh, I think that's the reason why we have a lot of twists now and a lot of like gamers playing and, and a certain type of game being played where you might target your allies and stuff is because they've, the game has evolved and they've seen duos get to the end and now they don't want to be sitting next to a, like a, a Wendell and Dom situation or things like that. So I'd say that like the new era, they have the benefit of um, evolution and time and studying the game for two and a half decades. Um, just like basketball, you look at like players now, you look at like a Kyrie and his handles and his footwork and things like that. The game has evolved. You put him back in the 80s, he might actually kill somebody on the court with his handles, you know? So, so like, I, I like that the game is evolving and that things evolve. I'm a fan of that. Um, I think you also have players from the past that are, it's, it's, it's a different game. They mm -hmm. played a different game. They, they might have been more loyal or they might have played stronger or the challenges might have even be, been different and we can't even do those challenges anymore. Um, I think a way to compare in a season 50 is, you know, you take these eras and you, you see, see what it is. Put a tribe of pre 40 players against a tribe of post 40 players or something like that. Or you put, you know, old, old school versus new school versus new era or something like that. Mm -hmm. You put them all out there and I mean, it's a lot shorter nowadays. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you put them out there and you see what it is. Cause I think that there are some very strong and very astute players from, from the past. But then we also have like some very, very smart and sharp game players of the new era. And we have some very strong, like Jonathan, Jonathan is a beast, you know what I'm saying? From 41, like you got some very strong players this, this era. So I think it would be cool to see how, I just think on season 50, you put them all in, put them all on an island and see what happens. Four. Four, okay, next. Whoever makes it the farthest. Well, we're either, we'll keep going around until everybody passes and doesn't want to make it any higher. So. Six. Six, oh, you guys uh, want to go, want to make it, you want to go higher than six okay, and have what? to do it with them or you want to leave go, it at six? Caleb. Do it. Hell, guys. So, no, you guys, no, it's, no, uh, it's, it's not uh, Eileen yeah, and George. Jordan, yeah. Do you guys want to make it higher or you're going to pass? Good. What was yeah. that? You're good. No you're deal. Passing. Wait, that's the wrong show. Okay. <laughs> you guys passing? Okay. No deal. Ben, okay. ben Simmons is the only <laughs> Australian basketball player. Okay, so right the now. number is six. Great. Okay, so you two guys, so Glad. you're the partners. Yeah. So you can stay seated, though. Oh. We can play though, right? Caleb was banking on playing right. basketball. <laughs> <laughs> what is his output randomness? If they succeed in the game, then if they succeed in the game, then both of you will get one point. If they fail, each of you, two teams will get one point. Can we change your answer to three? Okay. Okay. So 
<laughs> no, we're. <laughs> Wendell talked a lot about basketball, so. <laughs> What? Oh my god. Six times. That's a lot of balls. Six claps. That's quite easy. Oh, what claps? Very hard. Don't hit the lights. Oh. Oh, 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 you ate oh, that! Ah. Let's go! Light work, light work. All right, Bryce. Oh! Hey, I believe in you. I believe Come on, Bryce. In you, boy. All right. I love him. I'm right. Oh, Bryce, 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 Bryce! Oh. I think that was five. I counted five. Yay! We get a boy. <laughs> love averages. Man. Yay! Bryce was, Bryce was robbed again. Oh, Jeff, in the mic. Sorry. Yeah. For the people at home, the idea here is, and the number was six, just to record it, is what we're going to do. So the, there's a lot of games, like we talked about, in reality shows where people have to make choices without having full information about the implications of their choices. Right, so we're, we're, we're kind of looking at that. So now they've got to pick this number without really knowing what it is. So you guys can come around front here. So let's go to the next uh, slide, please. What do we do, uh, Just You're right going to get it. Okay, so take, your, take six cups. Take six cups. So one of you is going to hold your palm out, and the other one has to stack the cups alternating. Face up, face down, face oh up, face God, down. That's extremely hard. Until you have all, six <laughs> stacked up. <laughs> you got it. Okay. Give us those points, George. Give us those points. Wait, how do we that? How many do they have? Yeah. But how many are there now? You should run him Four. You can stand up. Oh! oh. <laughs> All right, just four. Okay. I don't have no points. So what you have to do is you have to make an animal noise, and the other person has to say the name of the animal. How many animals? Ten. <laughs> ten <laughs> animals. Okay. Hey, you have 30 hey, seconds to do Cat. ten animals. And do it in the mic. Do it in the mic. Do it into okay. the okay. mic and wait. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to watch a timer. Animals. Okay. So, Mertz, you're going to be in charge Just of counting. Just noises. Do you want to stand up? Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, face each other. Get like, here we go. Here we go. I would like to see if people we're don't. We're if, okay, okay. if somebody in the audience could just, you, you guys can keep track of the number that they do. I will be watching the time. Barnyard, don't say barnyard. out loud how many. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I guess you could say out loud how many they're doing. But we'll, we got this. Okay. Ten, Are you guys ready? You're, just be Get quiet. set. <laughs> go. Meow. Cat. Wolf. Wolf. Oink. Pig. <laughs> Moo. Cow. Nay. Horse. Ba. Twenty seconds. Sheep. Quack. Duck. Uh, fuck. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, human. Uh, bok, bok. Chicken. Um, Ten seconds. Bah. Oh, I already said that. Fuck. What other animals are there? <laughs> <laughs> Tiger. Yes. yes. Um, yes. And, <laughs> and that's um, time. I think I got it. How many did I, you? I have eight. I, my count was eight. Uh, yeah, God, how many fucking nine. animals are there? Nine. 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 It's nine. 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 You said fuck. That's nine. Easy. Yeah, Eight? that was pretty Eight? good. Did you say human? Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, no. Nine. 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 Does not count. Final answer okay. is nine. It was nine. nine. And we're being generous by giving tiger. Yeah. It's not human. <laughs> All right, so points. Okay, okay. so that is going to be very good. So who said nine? You guys said nine? No, they said ten. 
Oh, ten. ten. Okay, so Wolf, that's Wolf gonna be a point for underrated. George and Eileen. <laughs> like, okay, Wolf, so it's two Wolf. points for our two teams on the end. Wendell and Bryce have two. Fuck. And George have one. Okay, this is oh, the we're, final we're round. Oh, we're losing. It doesn't matter. It's, okay. it's, it's a lot of pressure. Two for what? Two points for Wendell and Bryce. Two points for George and Eileen. One point. One point. Nicely done, everybody. Okay, you guys are up with the final round. As for the final round. Everybody is going to know the game before you say what, what, uh, how hard it is. No, you too. Oh, we will. Everybody okay. is going to know the audience, everybody. So let's go to the next one. Okay, so the team is going to, we're not going to do a rope here. You're going to just stand up behind the table. And you have to throw, pa make paper airplanes and throw them as far as you can. And both of you will have to pass the oh, row. we both have to. Oh, or no. indicated by, you know, the, how far they think it's going to Have be. you ever made a paper oh. airplane? So uncool. So, yeah, you're just the Canadians. Yeah. I will say I, I don't I don't have a book or a YouTube channel to plug, but we will be at the bar later. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to support tequila, rum, beer, we're easy, you know. He could make it. Oh. Okay. Okay, so what I'd like everyone to think about, the question I'm going to ask the audience, because I teach a class, and so you guys, you know, and, and the people up here too, is, is what was the differences between those games? And was it more entertaining, like was that third one where you guys knew what it was, but they didn't know what it was? Was that more entertaining for you to have that secret knowledge? Was it better when everybody knew what was going on, or when nobody knew what was going on? What's where you think it's going. Okay, you're set. Let's get this going. I'm not ready. Do you want to come in? I mean, Okay. I got confidence in you guys. All right. You shouldn't. Okay. I'm going to give you another. Okay. Okay, so let's stand up. You can stand up over there in the center of the, the stage yeah. behind the tables. All right. I believe in you. Oh, that's not going anywhere. So you're actually no, going behind, behind the table. Yeah, behind Caleb. the table. Great. Stand up there. This is hang on. And actually, the people, the people gonna, that no, oh, you're hang both. On. Hang on one sec. Hang on. Yeah, no problem. Hang on one sec. The people that are in the row that have the blue noodle, uh, the people in that row, can you just raise your hand so that we know? Yeah, there you go. Okay, perfect. Leave okay. them up. Leave them up. So you're gonna just throw at the same time. You guys can count uh, yourselves down. See how you do. At the same time. Yeah, throw at the same time. This does kind of feel like survival. <laughs> you okay. Closer? All right, on three. Yep. All right. One, two. Oh! <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's a point for uh, Dash and Jelani, and a point for Wendell and Bryce, I think, right? Yep. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, we, we have a lot of uh, reality stars in our back row. If you just want to quickly wave hey. to the crowd. Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, and, of course, we have to thank our panelists. Uh, Caleb, Kelly, Dash, Jelani, George, Eileen. Uh, thank you. Um, and I left two out because they always get a special shout out. Um, <laughs> Uh, Bryce and Wendell, uh, I think, I say it all the time, I say it every time we do a real talk, um, we would not be here without you. I think that before Bryce and Wendell, um, this sort of like post-survivor stuff was really dying out, and I really think we wouldn't be having these gatherings at all without both of them, so uh, I want to give a really big uh, applause to... Uh, and uh, we can go to our last slide. Uh, we are currently uh, taking bookings for the next Real Talk uh, seminars that are going to be happening during the next Survivor season. Uh, you can find the details right there. And if you're interested in having us at your school or university, feel free to email us at realtalkpanels at gmail.com. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you.